It was literally the last student to shoot on uh, film, 35 millimeter, and edit the film together, which means literally cutting and pasting film. So I say all that just to say I, I have a, a deep appreciation for the, the art, the craft of filmmaking, everything from the writing and the directing down to what you see on the screen, the, the acting, uh, as well as the you know post-production elements that go into that. And so I've been a, a student of film for many years. Um, and Christian movies, you know, when I was younger, they were really terrible. And over the last, oh, you know, really the last 20 years, they have come so far. And to the point where there are a lot of Christian movies that I am proud to recommend to people. I enjoy watching. And you don't have that caveat of it was good for a Christian movie. They hold their own. You hear some laughing in the background. That's because I have... Uh, the, a, a writer and producer, Karen Abercrombie, and she is a fabulous actor in her own right. You will, you will recognize her if you saw War Room. I think that's the one that really put her out front. As well as Cami Arnett, who has been in so many films. He was fabulous in Overcomer. Uh, and so they have a, a new film called Discarded Things that is really the creation of Karen. And then Cami is... Uh, one of the characters in the film. I've got both of them right now live, and we're gonna have a great conversation. But before we do that, I want to show you the trailer for the movie Discarded Things. Here it is, watch this, and we'll be right back live with Cami Arnett and Karen Abercrombie. What's your experience working with troubled teens? This is Miss Grace. She's here to teach you music. Sounds like a waste of time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> We got a saying around here, meet them where they are at. And then? Anything past that is a calling. I thought we were safe here. Like, are you even a real teacher? Because I ain't heard nothing yet that matters. See, I thought we hired a teacher. No, what you did was hire the sitter. That's what this is. A life doing big things. Big? That ain't us. Even if we want to move on, the world doesn't just let you forget. If we only expect a minimum from them, that is all we're going to get. What do you want? I want to help. Well, then help. You know, I stopped dreaming a long time ago. But since you've been here, I mean, I'm dreaming again. Your family doesn't define who you are or where you're going. Stop believing the lies that this is all that there is. You stand up and fight. Stand up and fight for yourself. I don't know how to move on. I don't know. If this is what you want me to do, God. Please give me the strength. That is Discarded Things, and you're going to find out how you can see that movie. And Miss Karen Abercrombie, it's so great to have you back on Life Today. And uh, this is really your baby. Tell us a little bit about where this movie came from. Um, a couple of different places. I, I wanted to make a movie that would speak to a portion of the population that maybe felt uh, they were not in the in crowd. Hmm. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I've seen some incredible faith-based movies um, recently and had the privilege of uh, being in one playing Miss Clara War Room. And, uh, but a lot of the movies out there didn't deal with the rougher side of life. Hmm. I've always had a um, Oh, I don't know. I just felt like a lot of people sitting on the pews uh, felt like they were unseen because their stories weren't being uh, put out there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I chose to do Discarded Things. It's a story about real life, real things that happen, and we didn't tie it up in a, a sweet little bow. And there are a lot of people sitting on the pews who who have experienced uh, these situations 
and um, even people outside the church who would not darken the doorstep of a church because they come across some hypocrisy, some judgment. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to cast a wider net and tell this story as true as uh, I, I could and still stay within the faith-based mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, category, you know. Yeah. E even though had I gone further, but had I gone further, then I wouldn't have the venues to show it that are available today. Yeah, yeah. Cammy, tell me a little bit about your, your character as well as what you what you see in the message of this film. Well, you know, again, um, when you as an actor get an opportunity to, to play a role that you can definitely sink your teeth into and that makes an impact to the story and, and that brings about things that, especially in this genre, as uh, Karen was talking about, that uh, allows uh, certain things to be seen, spoken, uh, experience that uh, sometimes we don't get to delve into because we kind of count it as um, not fitting for the, the Christian uh, mm. uh, realm. And yet that is exactly what fits in because that's who Jesus came for. Mm. Um, that's what the role uh, of Solomon Grant was. Uh, uh, Solomon is a, is a man that um, is in God's hands but get out of God's hands. And so someone who is grappling with his own self and yet um, at the same time um, um, supposed to be there as an agent of God to, to declare righteousness. And uh, what that kind of dichotomy is between uh, happening in and, 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 and through the, somebody's life that uh, proclaims to be something, but maybe living uh, quite uh, an opposite and um, and so I got an opportunity to uh, to dig deep into that, and um, um, the uh, spark uh, that I think he brings in conversation to the church is what I think uh, is the most impactful um, because it, it, he's someone that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. He's someone that we need to understand is within the uh, the frame of church and that brings about a hypocrisy or that brings about a dark mark hmm. on the name of Christ and on his people. And um, uh, unfortunately that, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to uh, speak badly about the world, but allow the church to run amok. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Solomon Grant is, is one that we need to talk about and to allow the spirit of God to deal with amongst us. And so um, I was, it was quite a privilege Mm. to be able to, to, to have that role and, and, and to um, um, show who uh, some of the side of, of us, you know, actually is. Yeah. Now, Karen, I'm, I'm gathering these are foster children. Is this the situation? Uh, yeah, a lot of them who have uh, or, or are aging out. So then okay. they're in this home for the kids that are about to age out. I, I did foster care for many, many, many years. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. And I know that uh, people don't want to deal with the older uh, kids, but some of them, well, all of them are God's children, but, but some just need some love, some time, and um, they're, they're ready. They're like flowers that just need some rain and some nurturing and they bloom in a beautiful and amazing way. Too many times we're so, they make a little mistake and we want to throw them out, you know, and that's just really, really, really sad. Mm. Are, are some of these characters based on people that you worked with in the past? Um, some of the kids that we've had, uh, maybe bits and bobs mm. or maybe each child is a combination of one. Mm. Uh, that we had the uh, privilege of fostering. But uh, yeah, it was definitely important for me to bring that to life. Yeah, uh, how long did it take you to, to make this film? 15 days. Oh, okay, that, that's the shooting. <laughs> yeah, we shot you it were, in you 15 were that days. <laughs> it, it didn't take long to write because it was just pouring out. and. Uh, what I do is once I created the story and uh, made a treatment for it, then I 
worked with uh, Tara Lynn, who is a wonderful, Tara Lynn Marcel, who's a wonderful writer. And that is her thing. That is all she does. Mm -hmm. So then we sat and through writer's duet and just knocked that baby out, knocked that script out. That, that, that's amazing, actually. Yeah. That's one of the things that I think makes it different, too, because, you know, when you're writing and, and when you're creating, there is what you um, want to put down on paper or there's what you want to bring in, uh, bring out, but there's the download that God gives that becomes a flow that you can't stop. Mm -hmm. And and it's something that is, is, is God speaking just like you would behind a pulpit, but he's putting it on, on the screen. And um, that's what you, that's what makes these films uh, and, and the ones that we're talking about, uh, as far as the, the, the ones that have, have grown to this, this to this point, um, that's what they, they are doing. Is, it's really God's voice speaking um, in a different format. And so that that download happens and it, it, it hits the pages. And as actors, it's, again, God using the very talents that he gave us to declare what he wants to say out of what he's already written. And, and it's, it's when it comes together, you can tell that there's a difference. There's an anointing on it. Um, and again, that, that's what um, captures you, um, not only in, in the finished product, but in watching it come to be. You're, you're captivated mm -hmm. in the process itself because you're watching God speak through people while you're on yeah. set and everything else. And it's just um, like I think Karen has used the word, it's, it's, it's just such a privilege um, to, to know that you're a part of the will of God bringing these things to pass. Yeah. Karen, what would you say are the biblical themes that are illustrated through the characters and through the storyline? God is always willing to forgive. His grace never stops, no matter what. Mm -hmm. His love never stops, no matter what. We are all um, uh, works in progress, and he's always molding as long as we allow him to mold but his love for us never ceases, not one second. I, I noticed from the trailer, again, I haven't seen the film, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a little bit here, but it seems like your character uh, goes through a transformation in this process um, where there was maybe some frustration at the beginning, <laughs> and then and, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I gathering some insight there? Is that right? You talking to me or Cammy? To you, I mean, oh, your character. Oh, 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 definitely, definitely. My relationship with my father, and then what has happened to me, and then he turns his back on me. So uh, forgiveness, 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 mm. and forgiveness will always set you free. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's our good. Whole life, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're talking about this movie here, discarded things. Uh, and sub you know the subheading grace makes a way for miracles. That's it, it, that's such a, a beautiful message. Do you just on the practical side, is is this available now on Pure Flix? I was reading through some of the notes. Yeah, it's on Pure Flix right now. Okay, so that's yes. the best place. If somebody wants to go see this movie. Yes, yes, they can find it on Pure Flix, and then it will be distributed worldwide uh, shortly after. Okay, so the, I know it's been a tough year. The in-church screenings or in-theater screenings, are they not doing those this time around? Uh, no, okay. not really. I think some theaters are slowly starting to open up mm -hmm. under um, COVID requirements, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so definitely Pure Flix, the best place to catch yeah, that. Nice. What are you guys seeing in the way of, of <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a bit of a question for all the movie industry right now, but what are you guys seeing in the way, especially in the Christian films, and maybe what will, will are we gonna see any movies in 2021? How, are, how's it, how is it right now in the industry? Well, I, I think it's actually an opportunity, to be honest with you. Um, God has deregulated the system, and, and I think that's something that we as, as Christian yeah. filmmakers need to understand. Um, and it, it, you know how, how the scripture talks about in the, in the midst of famine, we will enjoy plenty. Mm -hmm. There is a um, um, uh, coming to uh, a play, uh, making plain the, the, the level, the playing field yes. that God has done that allows the creativity of the church to come out because now it, it's been proven that 
not only are Christian films viable, not only are they um, um, being well made, but they're also lucrative. And so now we've got an opportunity to make uh, or to cause Hollywood to see that there is a market and that they've been missing it for a long time. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the church because now it's not about the big blockbuster film being in the theater. It's about a well done film that makes a difference and touches people. Yes. And so um, I think it's a great opportunity. And I think that 2021 will be a, a continuation of a phenomenal year as the church realizes how much of an opportunity that it is. Is that what you're seeing out there, Karen? Absolutely, 100%. And um, that is one of the reasons. I don't know if you uh, are aware, but uh, I call him Cameron or Camille. Um, we've got, uh, we shot a pilot for a, a, a faith-based television series called um, Angels Unaware, where um, I am an archangel <laughs> and God sends me down to earth to encounter people right before they make a decision that would be detrimental to them, but not only them, but to the world at large, because people don't realize how connected we all are. Mm -hmm. So I come down here and my brother is already here raking uh, havoc. And uh, that's who Kamit plays. He plays my brother, Lucifer. And I'm you're telling not, you're you. Not, woo you're not typecasting, are you? I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> You know, uh, um, the, 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 the thing about the thing about this pilot too, I know because we're, we're dealing with discarded things now moving into, into Angels Unaware, the thing about both roles when it comes to Simon Grant in um, discarded things and Lucifer, of course, within um, um, uh, Angels Unaware is that you, again, the opportunity to bring out certain things that, that people think they know, but they really don't know. Um, I call it, uh, in, in un, un, Angels on the Way, I, I deal with unmasking Satan because there's so much of what the Bible says about him that we seem to not realize or, or, uh, or we've forgotten or he causes us to be deceived and not see. And um, it is a phenomenal opportunity to uh, shed the light on God, on Lucifer, on, on the devil here on earth and where our positioning is. And I, I think it, it's, it's a, uh, uh, the, 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 the pilot shows that, but the series itself um, um, has so, such an awesome potential to make such a big difference in, in how we live our lives as Christians. So um, I'm really excited about, about seeing um, what happens there. You know, I think discarded things just uncovers, takes the, the lid off of certain things. And I think this will as well. And I, I'm, I'm really proud of what we, what I've been able to see about it so far. I, I don't know that, is it a good thing to see in, in you know, the IMDB, uh, your name next to the character Lucifer? <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Spe especially when you see, uh, what he does and what we're doing and where we're going and why we're doing it the yeah. way we're doing it. See, we're casting a wide net too, so we can yeah. pull in all those people that like the vampire or whatever and uh, uh, the raising of the dead or whatever. And see, this will be a platform they can tune in. Not only will they be ministered to, but they will uh, be excellently entertained. Mm -hmm. But they'll be taking in that word, taking in that word in a way that I have never seen it delivered. You, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a delivering of truth, and yet on an excellence level and on a supernatural level. Yes, we are that, um, that has captivated the, the the natural senses of of the world, but they're only re hearing the lie. You know, they're, they're, they're getting all the supernatural stuff, but it's, none of it is factual. None of it makes any sense. None of it really uh, uh, leads you to the power of God. And so here you get to um, get the truth, but also get that supernatural, uh, uh, um, you know, mode of, of expression that, um, that capt captivates and, and, and centralizes the senses. So, um, man, it's, it's going to be deep. It's going to be great. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I love it. And, and actually, I want to ask you about the Christian thing. And again, my guests here are uh, Cameron Arnett, whom you'll recognize from 
Overcomer, amongst other, other films, uh, as well as Karen Abercrombie. And we're talking about Discarded Things, which is available now on Pure Flix. I encourage you to go look for this right here. There's the movie artwork. Uh, on Pure Flix, you can watch it now. Uh, other projects coming out. Um, here's a question that I, I wasn't going to broach this topic, but you kind of touched on it, so I will. Uh, and I, have, I, I was invited to pitch a screenplay to a Christian movie company. They didn't tell me the rules beforehand. So it got savage because I, like you guys, was like, hey, I want to deal with some real life issues, you know? And they're like, oh, well, we, we can't talk about this. We can't talk about it. And we, and we have to have an altar call at the end of the film. I was like, I didn't know those were your rules, right? I, 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 I'm guessing you run up against this a little bit because when you get into from a marketing standpoint, I, I get it. You got to know your audience. You're pitching this to an audience, and when you're pitching to a Christian audience, they there's certain things that that they will buy into faster than others. But now you're talking about dealing with whether in discarded things you're dealing with you know foster kids that have been rejected or real life situations, which, which means you're going to be talking about sex and drugs and abuse and all these things that are. You know, they're in the Bible. Lord knows half the Bible stories would be rated R if you made them. Um, right. How, how are you seeing, are, are, are we getting to a point where maybe we're going to see some more Christian films that will deal, even with supernatural stuff in the way you're talking about, that will give you a little more creative license to communicate a Christian message without being in such a constrictive box? It, 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 what about the Holy Spirit? Supernatural, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, nobody's dealing with the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and it, it is more than time to, um, sometimes you have to take people off the bottle. <laughs> and, and, no, no. I know, you're and, right, and, and, you're and, right. And, 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 and um, feed them fully nutritious, meals that are better for their growth heart mind soul spirit their lives you know we have so many lost people and um they need ministering to and it's it's hard to have someone from here speak to someone somewhere else and when, when you're willing to step beside someone or walk, put, put on their shoes, they see you in a different light. Mm -hmm. They're more apt to open up and allow you in. So um, it's interesting, uh, Camille, we won another award for discarded things. And the funny thing is we won in every category, but the uh, it, it, Christian Film Festival, but they said, the first few minutes of the film, they couldn't show because it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> but we won every award they had, and we were also the audience choice. Hmm. So what they did get to see outside of my character struggling with pills and, uh, and wine, it, it was enough because it was God, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me pick it, let me piggyback on that because you said something there that's extremely important for us to to realize what's really going on. It's not the people that have a problem with the films that we are not we're not talking about. It's the it's, gatekeepers. It's the powers that be, the critics, the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers. that are living behind uh, a false wall. You know, the reality is that the, the Bible says to us there are four kinds of ground, and out of all four, only one is good. Three of them are out there. And so basically, you have people in the church, the same people in the church um, that we are afraid to show a thing like this sort of things to are the ones that are going out and supporting the rated R movies in the world. Oh, yeah. And so the, the, the powers that be are, are falsely thinking that the church is not ready for certain things, but the church is clamoring to see the real. And so what's happening in, at, in these festivals, the reason why this kind of things is winning all these things is because you're, you're coming straight to the consumer. You're coming straight to the people. And, and the people are saying, wow, this is what I've wanted. I've been waiting for all this time. 
and yet when the the uh, gatekeepers want to show it, they are trying to safeguard the very people that are saying, I want to see it because this is what's happening in my life. You yes, know, my uncle Joe, he's today. beating up my mom and you know, all, all this kind of stuff is going on and we need the salvation, we need to see the real, we need to see how God deals with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so the people are letting us know that they are ready and that they want it and that they need the salvation that comes from it. And um, in due time, uh, I think that the gatekeepers will, will understand because unfortunately, and I'm gonna say this just like what we need in the film, unfortunately, the gatekeepers care about money. And when they realize that the money is in actually saving the people that they're trying to safeguard and thinking that they won't make the money if they show them this kind of stuff, um, it'll, it'll start passing through. Um, and it will be for the wrong reason, but the bottom line is salvation will come. And so um, we, the, the thing for us is that we have to keep putting it out there in spite of until things catch up. Um, we, can't, we can't allow ourselves to pull back on doing the right thing um, just because maybe right now it's not being seen as, uh, to as many people as it should be. But yeah. um, um, so we're, 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 we're the, the, um, the, the trailblazers and that's okay. Yeah, oh, and you know what? I, I greatly appreciate you guys pushing down some of those Christian walls, if you will. Uh, and and you know, it, it, I understand that uh, if you make films that only cost money, that makes it difficult to make more films. And so they're trying to safeguard their their return on the dollar. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I, I, I love the fact that you're taking these things straight to the consumer, and they're enjoying them. Because you're 100% right. I don't know, I don't know how many pastors that I've run across that make references to things like uh, the the Walking Dead or something, you know, or Star Wars or something like that. I mean, uh -huh. we're watching these things. We might as well be honest about it and we might as well enter into the space with a little more latitude to, to tell stories amongst real life situations that still point to Christ. So Karen, uh -huh. Cammie, thank you both for doing that. You're welcome. And I would just quickly like to say to you, you might want to revisit your project. Say it again. It. You may want to revisit the project that was that you wanted to do. Oh yeah. 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 I think I think the time yeah. um, it is changing quickly. So so even those things that you know you may have pitched before that didn't get through, I think we're at a point now that um, that that God Himself is breaking down those doors. Hmm. So um, what may have not been viable. Right. right. We, we, we have to be willing to sit with the tax collector like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, my problem when it comes to a storytelling standpoint is that any good script, you're going to have that, that change in the lead character. Mm -hmm. And when you're wanting to show the power of salvation, oftentimes, just like in the Bible, you kind of have to show where they came from and that's I think where it gets us in trouble you know like you say if your character was you know drinking too much alcohol and taking pills and that's what they didn't want to show and I'm thinking that's nothing all right um, but that in order to show the the transformative power of the gospel and the grace you kind of got to show the the bad to get to the good mm -hmm. um, anyway I appreciate you guys doing that. Anything, anything that I missed before I let you go today? I sure appreciate both of you sitting in oh, this conversation. Oh, and you too. You too. Thank you. Any, anything you want to say before that you're working on or that I, I yeah, need to I, show I, people? I do want to say, I do want to say this, um, uh, especially dealing with, with Karen. Uh, I think the same way that we're dealing with, with film, the transition and wanting, having to go from the redemption to, I mean, uh, uh, the, the need for redemption and to the redemption aspect of, of film. I think uh, for the longest time too, that as actors, uh, people have a tendency to think that that's all that you do. And, and that this is, this is only who you are. And I wanna commend uh, Karen because part of the example that she's being is also breaking out of that box. The same way that we're, the films are helping us to break out of a box of, of what we show um, on screen, but the person um, is also breaking the boxes. 
you know, of, of, of being a woman, of being an actor, of being, you know, uh, 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 black, of you, you name it. They're all, all of these boxes that um, would put her in the, uh, and the creativity to produce and to direct and to write and all these kind of things. I think that's, that, that is also uh, the example that we're seeing that uh, hopefully will break the individual uh, creative people uh, their boxes and understand that there's so much more that they can do and that so much more that they can be in God's hands to um, be a part of all of this. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I just have to point to you two, both of you, for anybody that wants to, to know, can, can I really succeed in what I feel like God has given me? And you two are doing it. And I know it hadn't been easy. I know it's not, a, people haven't just rolled out the red carpet for, for you guys and said, come on, walk on down. You've had to knock down some doors. But no. it can be done, and I appreciate both of you, especially uh, as, as Cammie's pointing out, Karen, what, what you have, have done and continue to do. So thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you, Cammie, mm. for walking alongside me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, check out the film. Uh, it is available on Pure Flix right now. I'll show you the graphic as we exit here. And, and share this. Let's get the word out. By the way, there is a Facebook page. I should show you that uh, for the film. It is somewhere in here, uh, and if you want to check that out, you can uh, get, see some updates and things like that. But um, support Christian movies. Support them by spending a few dollars. I mean, it's not that expensive. Invite people over if it's safe. I get the COVID thing. But, you know, share this. Tell people about it. Talk about it. Post about it. This is how we get the energy going, the excitement going. And when you've got good projects like discarded things, you can stand behind them and feel good about it. So, so do it. And I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for joining us here on Life Today Live. Join us again tomorrow. We've got more great interviews lined up all week. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you get the notifications when I have great guests like Karen Abercrombie and Cameron Arnett, today's guest. Thank you guys again both. We'll see you guys next time. That means tomorrow here on Life Today Live.